Hi, I'm Jess, an interaction designer and teacher of design. And a lot of my research focuses on how communication platforms have been designed and how this may impact communities. Today, we're taking a look at one of the subjects I teach, which uses Discord as a communication platform for our online and in-person students. In the wake of the COVID-19 lockdowns, Australian universities have made hybrid and online alternatives to their existing subjects the new norm. These typically are delivered synchronously through a mix of technological interventions in parallel as two separate streams, or as a combination of the two. Creating blended and hybrid learning environments requires the time, attention, and creativity of the educator to adapt the technology to their pedagogical needs. The technology in each case may not be entirely suitable for the subject, but may instead emerge from several other factors, such as familiarity, access, and institutional policy. Example of this is Zoom a platform that saw widespread uptake as a synchronous option due to the philosophy that it works and it's easy to learn. But in the years that have followed the lockdowns, we've had time and resources enough to try alternatives that may be more suited to our desired needs and outcomes. The options for bridging gaps between online and in-person students to provide equitable, if not similar, learning opportunities are varied. Previous ethnographic studies have looked at hybrid classrooms with an emphasis on the technology's impact on learning outcomes. These studies have highlighted several challenges, including concerns relating to social well-being, the need for multimodal communication that supports both synchronous and asynchronous conversations, and the communication ambiguity arising from the limitations of the software, such as the compression of tone and the lack of social cues from the environment and body language. These issues all relate to concerns about communication. This particular slice of research looks at the ways in which students in a blended learning environment communicate within online collaborative groups that support their learning. We use a framework from speech pathology research, in particular, augmentative and alternative communication, or AAC for short, to guide analysis of data from a semester of learning over Discord. AAC takes into account the many goals and necessities of communication, encompasses not just high-tech interventions such as specialist communication devices, speech generators, and applications, but also low-tech and no-tech actions such as writing, gesturing, drawing, and pointing. We find it useful for understanding not just what is communicated in online and hybrid classes and studios, but how things are communicated through the technology and the activities. But first, a bit of background. Community is often cited as both a goal and a byproduct in education environments, whether formal or informal learning communities share a defining trait. They create chances and opportunities for learning between participants through social interactions. One of the more popular frameworks for such communities is Wenger's community of practice, which participants are aligned through a common or shared topic practice or understanding and develop their knowledge in the related field through their interactions with one another. At a purely academic level, learning communities potentially improve retention rates and increase overall student satisfaction in their university experience. How, however, beyond this are social aspects. These communities are beneficial to students and to teachers by providing social outlets, creating networks and connections that can be utilized within and outside the classroom. This is especially important in subjects and fields like design that rely on collaborative development, where the act of communicating and collaborating with peers is just as much as part of the learning as the tangible artifacts that are produced over the course of a class. The communication in and of itself becomes an artifact. To understand the communication and creation processes occurring on software we use in hybrid classrooms, it's important to explore not only the content and outputs, but also the manner and method through which they are expressed. AAC serves as a valuable entry point for this, enabling us to delve into the nuances of how information is conveyed and artifacts are generated within these digital and collaborative environments. To do this, we must first align our software with AAC by determining if and how it enables users to meet four communication goals. And these goals are 
one, the expression of needs and wants, which covers the ways in which a person can ask for help or alter their environment or the behaviours of others. Two, developing social closeness, wherein the purpose is the communication itself to develop a relationship with other people. Three, exchanging information, which typically requires specific vocabulary relating to gaining more knowledge about a topic or interest area. And then four, the participation in etiquette relating to the little rituals performed as part of everyday life, such as greetings and courtesy statements. With all this in mind, let's talk about the unit. Interactive narrative design is a unit offered through QUT's School of Design for semester two, attended by a range of students from various degrees and backgrounds, such as visual design through to IT studies. The assessment consists of large group work components to produce a significant design artifact, a highly visual guide to an original fiction setting for tabletop games and subsequent adventures or stories within that setting. Online students participate primarily through Blackboard synchronous communication software, Blackboard Collaborative Ultra for lectures and theoretical discussions, while they use Discord for activities and group work. The lecture is conducted as part of a true hybrid experience, streamed online to students while they can also attend in the hall, while studios are run in parallel with separate classes. What typically occurs in a design studio is serendipitous and contextual, with activities being process-oriented rather than outcome-based. Design and other creative subjects are reliant on the trust built between peers in order to engage in critiques and collaboratively support one another in their learning. Discord was chosen as the location for studio activities in the online class, as well as the informal forum for the subject because of the broad range of tools available for communication and collaboration, and because of the many students that were already comfortable using it uh, as communication outside of the university context. So let's talk about Discord. What is it? Originally designed for gamers wishing to coordinate activities over group voice calls and text, Discord has since evolved to include tools for a variety of needs through its key function, servers. A Discord server is a collection of user-created voice and text channels, allowing for users to communicate synchronously or asynchronously. Standard server architecture adopted by server creators will typically break up voice channels by activity, such as a lounge for general conversation or a meeting room for focused meetings, while text channels are divided by topics, such as games, sports, server inquiries, food, etc. Voice channels can be connected to via voice and video and offer basic screen sharing capabilities, similar to Zoom. Text channels, meanwhile, allow users to rapidly format and send text, as well as images, videos, files, stickers, emojis, and GIFs. Users can also use reactions in these text channels by responding to uh, things sent with an emoji, which includes all the emoji uh, that you're used to on your phone, plus potentially even some custom uploads to each server. You can also include bots as part of a server, and these are automated users that can increase existing admin capabilities uh, or provide new actions or activities through text-based inputs. The other feature that makes Discord servers a desirable platform for online classes and activities are server roles. These roles are assignable tags that admins can use to do anything from change the color of a user's display name to allowing and limiting access to various channels in a server. So what was observed? The interactive narrative design server was set up in readiness for the semester with several basic channels. These consisted of a combination of unit specific channels, such as a unit discussion text channel, as well as typical Discord general chat channels like a lounge, a kitchen for things like off-topic conversation and pictures of food and pets. However, over the course of the semester, several channels were added as the need arose or on student request. These include a memes channel, a dice pictures channel, a graphic design channel, and even a channel to play a form of Pokemon in using the bot Poke2. 
this spot spawns Pokemon randomly based on how active the text channels are across a hosting server, and they're caught by correctly identifying and spelling the related Pokemon's name in a reply. This spot had a bit of a knock-on effect too. More conversations across more channels would spawn more Pokemon, which in and of itself was caused more conversations and interactions. Some of the names of the server channels are tongue-in-cheek nods to popular internet references and memes, such as Dice Gerblins, which is a play on Dice Goblins, a term used to describe people who collect dice in hobbyist spaces, and Graphic Design is My Burden, referencing a popular meme, Graphic Design is My Passion. A vocabulary shared with the students who found themselves immersed in internet culture. The public channels with the most consistent activity were the general channel, unit discussion, kitchen, wholesome memes for wholesome teams, and Pokemon. Across the whole server, there were 168 total users, including the four teaching team members and three bots. Something interesting that occurred over the course of the semester was a series of images posted to the kitchen from around week four right up till the end of the semester. These were screenshots of the shared slides that were used for teaching, which had been vandalized by students in Blackboard Collaborate as they waited for the class to start. These artworks gained a lot of attention from students from all of the classes, not just the online ones, in the form of reactions. And it became a bit of a meme to vandalize a slide so it could be posted to the fridge. But looking at the data itself, the general channel serves as an efficient vertical slice of the entire server as it maintained frequent use across the whole semester and conversation topics range from direct questions about the unit to much more informal jokes and conversations. And this is why this channel was chosen for the overall analysis of the data. Using a hybrid thematic analysis approach, this data was analyzed to first sort the interactions into the four communication goals, plus a fifth category for orientation, referring to how users can navigate the platform through text and gain operational competency with the platform. Once these were identified, it was possible to break them down further into themes. Themes are distinct from communication goals. Where a goal is the purpose of the communication exchange, the theme is how this is achieved conversationally. For example, while an exchange might have a goal of developing social closeness, the way that this is conveyed is through an exchange about the content of the unit, making the theme topical. The themes that emerge from the data are off-topic conversations, platform administration, platform meta, Unit administration, tangential, the conversations relating to or inspired by the content at a surface level, but not directly contributing to understanding or learning. And then finally, topical. Originally, the goal of the analysis was to see if the server and the way that the architecture had been designed allowed for a community of practice to emerge for hybrid units and studio-based classes. The data supporting the emergence of a community of practice is the number of interactions that are topical or directly relate to the unit and the exchange of information. As communities of practice are developed through socially interrogating and developing knowledge, practice, and the conferral of information, this was exhibited through these exchanges between students that resulted in the development of their understanding of the learning content whether through direct questions, activities, or more informal conversations. In comparison to traditional forms of communication in a subject setting such as emails or in-class questions, the usage of the server was more prevalent among students across both modes of delivery, showing a higher degree of participation. Students took the initiative to respond to each other's queries, even those that would typically be directed towards a member of the teaching team demonstrating a sense of ownership over their learning. The request for and use of support channels like Graphic Design is My Burden further solidifies this trend of students actively engaging and supporting one another in their learning using Discord. More significantly, however, was the amount of interactions that had the goal of developing social closeness and were off topic from the learning content or only tangential to it, 
These are conversations for conversation's sake, sometimes inspired by memes or shows or campus cultures, but never directly about the subject. These interactions outnumber the more direct subject or activity-based interactions and were from an equal spread of students from both online and on-campus modes of delivery and often were cross-class, meaning these were students who would never interact as part of class activities but were interacting on the server. This general channel slice of data doesn't even include the artworks on the fridge or the sheer amount of back and forth inspired by the Pokey 2 bot. The fridge artworks were an activity that occurred live outside of Discord, yet were preserved as a tangible artifact on the server, representing the development of their relationships with one another and the teaching team long past the clearing of those annotations and the conclusion of the class. This research project is still ongoing, but these findings suggest a rich vein for the analysis of social platforms inside and outside of the classroom. Using AAC to understand not just what is be being communicated, but why, and later down the line, how, can help us gain more insight into the relationships that make up these communities and connected learning. There is plenty enough still to discover from Discord's use in the classroom. And Future iterations of this research include expanding analysis into multiple channels, activities, and even considering the affordances of the design and the impact that the interface plays. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'm always happy to talk about any of this via email, online, or hey, even on Discord. <laughs>